Miami Dolphins defensive back Jalen Ramsey is one step closer to a return for the team and a debut for the Dolphins in 2023. His 21-day practice window is reportedly opening as of today. You are Locked On Dolphins, your daily Miami Dolphins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right. Hi, yeah, hey, welcome to another episode of Locked On Dolphins. It's your team every day here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, Kyle Krabs, a lifelong Miami Dolphins fan, host of Locked On Dolphins, co-host of Locked On NFL Scouting. You can find our shows on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Tip of a cap to our everydayers who do keep it locked in with us on a daily basis because it is your team every day. We don't just say it, we live it here on the Locked On Network. Uh, today on the show, we were going to do an Eagles primer, and then... Uh, the news came out this morning that Jalen Ramsey is reportedly set to practice today as a member of the Miami Dolphins for the first time since the second day of training camp uh, in which he went down with a knee injury, which we would discover after kind of some hoopla was a meniscus tear that needed complete uh, repair. Uh, at the news of that injury, it was reported that J Jalen Ramsey would return sometime in, quote, December. That was the reported timeline after the procedure had been completed for Jalen Ramsey. He is practicing on October 18th. And with injured reserve, there is uh, a three-week window to activate and place Jalen Ramsey on the active roster. So as the team goes from here, this is a really fascinating development because Miami defensively, they've been with their struggles, right? And, and a lot of this has been in accordance with the newness of Vic Fangio's scheme and acclimating to a new scheme. And Ramsey was supposed to be at the very beginning of this journey this season when they acquired Ramsey via two third round picks, one of them being Hunter Long. When you acquire Jalen Ramsey, he was supposed to be the glue guy on the back end. He was supposed to be the glue guy in the secondary who has played a large majority of his snaps in the nickel, which is such a critical component of this Vic Fangio defense. And we saw that last week. The Dolphins are out here running four-man fronts and nickel personnel against the Panthers, even down in the mid to low red zone, trying to play nickel defense because it's where their bread is best buttered as far as conceptually what they want to do. That nickel defensive spot is, from an, a structure of your defense perspective, one of the critical pivot points in this defense. And when Jalen Ramsey comes back, there's going to be a domino effect that we're going to explore a little bit here today on the show. But right now, what we know is Jalen Ramsey is set to practice today. His 21-day activation window will start today, which means the Dolphins will have three weeks to put him on the active roster. They have three games between now and their bye week. They have the Eagles this week. They have the uh, New England Patriots at home next week in week eight. And then they have the Kansas City Chiefs in Germany in week nine before a week 10 bye. Ramsey may not play in any of those three games. But he also potentially could be making his season debut overseas in Germany against the Chiefs. So Mike McDaniel has always been very conscious of putting timelines on things. And he was asked on uh, Monday about Jalen Ramsey uh, based off the report that came out at the beginning of this week that, that he was nearing a return to practice. And he said, you'll have to stay tuned on Wednesday. And when the doctors say he's, he's ready, he'll be ready to go. And, and he's chomping at the bit and, and we're here for a player who, uh, you acquired in March, who was supposed to be the biggest personnel addition that you had, arguably on either side of the football. And he has not played in the Dolphins through six games or five and one regardless. And the defense has had its struggles in this stretch for sure. But potentially getting Ramsey back into the fray, either going into the Kansas City game or coming out of the bye against the Raiders and for the stretch run, you're talking about a trade deadline caliber impact and acquisition, but technically a trade deadline impact and acquisition 
that has been with your team throughout the entire offseason program. So it's kind of like the the silver lining of getting him back. And of course, when we've talked about this roster construction, the objective of Chris Greer and the roster he's assembled is you want to put together a roster that has enough math changers and difference makers and cornerstone players that you can bridge the gap. Miami has played without Ramsey, without Armstead, without Phillips. Well, those are all meaningful players for this football team. They played a game without Jalen Waddell. And now you're at the precipice of getting, and, and without Armstead, and you're at the precipice of getting Ramsey back. It is huge for the communication on the back end. It's huge for a confidence perspective. It's a massive extra domino when you look at how the Dolphins have been trying to navigate playing nickel with this personnel loss that they have incurred. And it's coming at a wonderful time for Miami where you know at the very least he'll play against the Raiders coming out of the bye, if not before that. Now, what uh, the dominoes ultimately look like, uh, I think you have to look at from a snaps percentage where Miami is, is getting their contributions. You have to ask yourself who's on the chopping block for that to see reduced snaps, who's on the chopping block to go back to the bench almost in their entirety. And uh, that's not an enviable discussion because Miami has constantly been chasing this. They, they have been chasing the right blend of players. And if, if it just happens to take you all the way through until Jalen Ramsey is back, at least now we know there's a timeline on that to happen. If Jalen Ramsey, when Jalen Ramsey steps foot on the practice field today, the latest he will play, most likely play in a game, is against the Raiders in Week 11. And you know, okay, we have three games. How can you survive these three games as best as you can and play complementary football across the board as best as you can before the strength of this defense? Because everybody wants to know, how is this defense going to get better? This is how. This is one of the steps of tangible improvement that can be had. We're going to explore the personnel dominoes next here on this episode of Locked on Dolphins. So stick with us. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked on Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks all season long. So whether you're prepping for a daily draft or scouting the waiver wire, every week we are providing you with a winner that is a guaranteed fit on your roster. So let's see who Vinny has picked out for us on this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit fantasy pick of the week. Drake London is starting to show why the Falcons drafted him among the many talented wide receivers in the first round of the 2022 NFL draft and why he was a hot sleeper for 2023 fantasy drafts. London has found his groove in the offense with Desmond Ritter over the past two weeks. He has caught 15 of his 21 targets for 203 yards. He draws another good spot in week seven against the Bucks who have struggled to contain team's number one wide receivers this season. London is guaranteed to keep bringing the pleasing production with great matchups ahead against the Titans, Vikings, and Cardinals before a week 11 bye. And that Falcons offense, over 400 yards of offense in each of the last two weeks. So they are absolutely finding their groove. And Vinny Iyer from Lockdown Fantasy Football is going to help you find yours this season to ensure you win your fantasy championship. eBay Motors knows a championship team is all about each player being a perfect fit, and the same goes for your vehicle. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly with brake kits, LED headlights, roof racks, bumpers, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. With eBay's guaranteed fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber and not cash. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay guaranteed fit available only to U.S. customers, eligible items only, and exclusions do apply. So Miami, from a snap percentage, I think this is pretty interesting. If I asked you what Miami Dolphins defender has taken the most snaps this year, what, what, what would your answer be? The answer is Kate or Kohu. 394 snaps defensively is best on the team by one snap over Javon Howard. Xavier Howard, who's dealing with a, a groin issue. He's day to day. Uh, he's played 386 snaps. Those are the only three members of this Dolphins defense that have played over 90% of the snaps. Cater Kohu, Javon Holland, Xavier Howard. 
when the Dolphins are in nickel, with or without the Jalen Ramsey, those are all going to be players who take meaningful snaps for your football team and are, are probably going to live on the football field. Those three guys will continue to be those kinds of guys. Now you have Deshaun Elliott as the fourth highest snapping defensive back. He's behind Jerome Baker as far as the total defense. Baker's taken 87% of the snaps. Deshaun Elliott has taken 81 and a quarter percent of the snaps at 338. He, of course, did not play against the Bills in week four. So he's missed a game, but he's played if every game, just to just do rudimentary math here, because I'm not a math guy. We all know that's well established. If every game is worth 20% of your snaps uh, and you missed one out of six games, you're tracking to be right in line with Javon Holland and Cater Kohu if, if you're Deshaun Elliott for the number of snaps that you've taken when you're at over 81% and you've played in five of six games. Bradley Chubb is the only other defensive player in excess of 80% of snaps. He's played 80 point, almost 80% on the dot, 333 snaps. Christian Wilkins, the only other defensive player over 70% of the snaps. The question is, how far down the list do you have to go to get to the next defensive back? Because your top five were Cater, Javon, Xavier, and Deshaun. Eli Apple is your next highest snapping player in the secondary with 62% of the snaps. He, of course, has been the other outside corner when the Dolphins have gone into nickel for the vast majority of the season to move Cater Kohu inside. Miami thus far this season has not played a lot of matchups, but I think what will be interesting is when you have Jalen Ramsey back in the fray, Ramsey can play outside. I have a hard time envisioning a world in which Jalen Ramsey is not on the football field 100% of the snaps when he is fully healthy. Now, maybe as they're weaning him back in, he's on a snap count in the same way that Jalen Phillips was on a snap count and took 30 snaps defensively in week six against the Panthers. We'll find out. At least you have some depth, especially if you get Nick Needham and Jalen Ramsey back, suddenly you have a lot better depth than having Justin Bethel and Perry Nickerson serving as your dime, uh, dime back. That's a major boost, especially because of the physicality that Jalen Ramsey provides as a big DB. So if you want to play him inside certain weeks, if you want to help your run support, I'll say this, Cater Kohu's uh, probably the best tackling corner on the team right now. That honor will go to Jalen Ramsey when he is healthy. Eli Apple, I think, is your second most attractive run support and tackling player. He becomes third. The domino effect, like if you're going to go dime and your dime can be Xavier Howard, Javon Holland, Deshaun Elliott, Jalen Ramsey, Cater Kohu. Do you want Eli Apple outside and have Kohu and Ramsey in the, in the middle or as the, as the, the sub package players as arguably your two best tackling corners. Now what happens if you want to go coverage? You know, I, I think Ramsey opens you up so much more to play matchups because you are going to have a player you probably trust a little bit more on the perimeter that's not Eli Apple because it still feels like we're learning to trust Eli Apple and there is some variance from a coverage perspective with Eli Apple that, uh, and, and this, this doesn't even include Nick Needham, who I would probably put in front of both Justin Bethel and Perry Nickerson on your defensive back depth chart anyway. So the domino effect here is very, very real for what it is going to do. Now, what happens when you play a team like the Chiefs? Let's say that, that Ramsey is back to play the Chiefs. You're not going to play matchups, but aren't you probably going to want Jalen Ramsey in the nickel to cover Travis Kelsey as frequently as possible? And then you have Cater Kohu living outside? What happens if you go against a smaller team that runs 10 personnel or 11 personnel at a much higher clip and they have a, a plotting tight end? Then you might want Jalen Ramsey outside against a primetime uh, number one wide receiver. Like if you play the Tennessee Titans, you might want Jalen Ramsey on the perimeter and you might want Cater Kohu in the nickel. Uh, because you're probably going to get more of DeAndre Hopkins with Jalen Ramsey matched up on the outside. Like, it's not necessarily we're going to travel our corners and match one for one, but it does give you more flexibility to have players that you feel are interchangeable play inside and outside. Because right now you have Cater Kohu 
And that's it. Like, I don't think Xavier Howard lives in a world very successfully as a nickel corner because he doesn't tackle particularly well. He's not particularly going to run support. Eli Apple in that area, if you're too loose in the middle of the field in coverage, which is where the concern is with Eli. Now, I think he, he's ad, he's been admirable as a fill defender and a fit defender. But if you're going to play him in coverage in the middle of the field, there's a lot more space that you can give up run after catch. Ramsey is the other player, the other fluid player, and that doesn't even get into the positional versatility of Ramsey to play on the roof of this defense, too. No, you you really want to start to unlock Javon Holland. Now Javon Holland can start to get down, potentially play some nickel himself instead of just being a rotation safety that just rolls down. Ramsey can do that too. So when we talk about structurally the nickel defender being so important, having multiple pieces that can play multiple spots allows you to play matchups in a degree in which the Dolphins simply have not been able to do because Xavier Howard's an outside corner. Deshaun Elliott's a high safety. Eli Apple's an outside corner. Cam Smith feels like they, they feel he's an outside corner. Cater Kohu can move. Cater's probably best inside, but there's going to be matchups where you're going to want the size and physicality of Jalen Ramsey or potentially Javon Holland, and you can do that when you have another player who has overlap of skills that the Dolphins have not had to this point in the season. So this is all really exciting stuff. Uh, we are going to talk about the next probably two to three weeks, uh, looking at the opponents in question and, and Ramsey's absence. He almost guaranteed will not play against Philadelphia. I would say it's probably 95% he doesn't play against New England. I would say it's you're getting close to 50-50 if he plays against Kansas City, and then you're, you're looking very likely to play against the Raiders after the bye. So we'll talk about those teams and the stress that Miami's personnel is going to find themselves in over the course of the next couple of weeks. That's next here on this episode of Locked on Dolphins, so stick with us. Today's episode of Locked on Dolphins is sponsored by BetterHelp. You ever feel like your brain is getting in its own way? Like, you know what you should do. You know what the right thing to do is. What's good for you. But you just can't find yourself doing it with consistency. Therapy helps you figure out what is holding you back so you can work for yourself instead of against yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's designed to be done entirely online. It's convenient. It's flexible. It's suited to your schedule. You can fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOn to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOn. So this is kind of getting into where we were going to go on today's show originally uh, before the Ramsey news dropped. In our laps, uh, Philadelphia is a team that, from a supporting cast perspective, around Jalen Ramsey or uh, Jalen Ramsey, geez, Jalen Hurts, uh, is one of the better groups in the league. They acquired DeAndre Swift at the trade deadline. Uh, he's averaging over five yards a carry. He has become the lead back in this backfield. He, by a significant margin across any other skill player uh, has more than two X the touches of any other skill player on this offense. That plus one of the best offensive lines in football. We don't really know what Lane Johnson's status is going to be for the game, but even if you go left tackle, my uh, Landon Dickerson, Kelsey, uh, they have quality starters or better. And Lane Johnson's a cornerstone player. If he's available now missing a cornerstone player would hurt you, but Jack Driscoll is, a quality depth player who would play in, in his absence if Lane Johnson's unable to go. So you have a running game uh, that, that's pretty significantly impactful. You, you look at what Philadelphia's done. They did not run the ball well against two teams this season. They did not run the ball well against the New England Patriots, and they did not run the ball well against the New York Jets. If you look at the other fronts that they've played, they played Minnesota. 
Miami's got a better group than that. So that's good news because they tagged Minnesota for 259 yards. Now, Brian Flores out here walking up uh, exotics and 5 packages uh, against the Eagles. And they're saying, okay, we're just going to pound the rock and run right at you because you don't have any, you have one defensive lineman on the field. <laughs> Miami's not going to do that. They played the Rams, which I think Miami's front in its entirety is, is better than as well. They tagged the Rams for 159 yards. They played the Bucks, who they managed to tag for 201 yards. Uh, that's the one that stands out a little bit because I do think Tampa has uh, some pretty strong talent up front. Uh, and DeAndre Swift managed to go 16 for 130 in that game. And they got the other 61 yards from Kenneth Gainwell and Jalen Hurts. Uh, the quarterback run game element for Philadelphia is going to be a challenge. Um, and then you get into the passing game. And it's Dallas Goddard at tight end. It's A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith to go with the running back that we've already acknowledged in uh, DeAndre Swift. They have a pretty sizable challenge. But here's what's interesting about Philadelphia. If you take those four skill players that you mentioned, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, DeAndre Swift, they are the only players that have caught more than nine passes this season across the six games that the Eagles have played. Uh, geez, are we going to do this math? Nine plus four plus four, 17 plus 22. 20, so 22 minus 41. I'm going to do the math. 119 of 141 receptions this season have gone to those four players. It's 85%. 85% of their passing game runs through five players, and one of them is the back out of the backfield. So you know who's going to get the ball. You know who's not going to get the ball. When you're trying to defend against this team, you have a physical, big-bodied, outside receiver that can win down the field. You have a twitchy, uh, explosive perimeter receiver who can win inside when he needs to as well in Devontae Smith. You have a big, physical, athletic, run-after-catch type of threat in Dallas Goddard. You're going to have to play a little bit more mismatchy than what you have. If, if the Dolphins are going to come out and they're just going to play vanilla and they're going to say, well, we're going to live in eleven per or in nickel personnel against the Eagles and what they bring to the table, and we're going to rely on our front to win up front against the Eagles offensive line, and our outside corner is going to be Xavier Howard, and Eli Apple, and Cater's going to play in the slot, and we're going to just pass it off and make the calls and, and try to leverage based on the formations that the Eagles are going to present to us. That's going to be a tough, that's going to be a tough assignment. You'll miss Jalen Ramsey for this game. And when the, when the Ramsey injury came through, I remember having this conversation. I said, there's probably three or four games before the bye that you will tangibly miss Jalen Ramsey. And they are, ironically enough, of the games that have been played that you said that about, they are the two games in which the Dolphins' defense had their worst performances of the season. You will tangibly miss a player like Jalen Ramsey against a team like the Buffalo Bills. You will tangibly miss Jalen Ramsey against a team like the Chargers. And sure enough, 433 and 414 yards of offense. Defensively, they've been very respectful from a yardage perspective in every other game that they play, including the rushing defense. You will tangibly miss Jalen Ramsey in a matchup against a team like Philadelphia that has the degree of quality starter or cornerstone players that the Eagles have in their supporting cast, plus the offensive line. If you play the Chiefs without Jalen Ramsey, you'll tangibly miss him there too. So what do you have to do differently that maybe is a little bit against the grain of the pure ideology of your team and how you want to run your defense to accommodate for the absence? Because I don't think they've pushed the right buttons yet in those matchups. The good news is you got New England in here. You already played the Patriots once. You held them to 288 yards of offense and four, turned the ball over twice on them. And quite frankly, they, they rolled up a bunch of fourth quarter yardage with Miami sitting on a lead, trying to milk the clock and, and get out of there with a win. New England should have even had the yardage that they did. And now the Patriots 
right now are in probably the worst stretch of play this team's seen in forever. They've scored 35 points in the last four games combined. They've, they're minus six in turnover differential the last three weeks. They haven't had 300 yards of offense in a game since week four against the, against, since week three against the Jets. They went against the Saints at home, got eight first downs. They went against the Cowboys in Dallas. They had 10 first downs and three points in those two games combined. You got them in week eight. You got to solve the riddle in week seven, and you got to be prepared to solve the riddle again in week nine. And then you're going to get into your schedule. You're going to play the games, and you're going to come out of the bye, and you have the Raiders, the Jets, the Commanders, the Jets, the Cowboys, the Ravens, the Bills. That's to close the season. And I'm going to be honest. I'm looking at these offenses, the Raiders offense, the Jets offense, uh, without Aaron Rodgers, the Commanders offense, the Titans offense, the Jets offense again, Dallas. I mean, Dallas does not look like the offensive team that you thought they would be with Mike McCarthy. Now they're sixth in scoring offense, but they're getting a ton of defensive touchdowns. They got a blocked field goal return by Noah Benogany in week one. They had a 22-yard pick six. They had a fumble return from Leighton Van Der Esch. They had a 54-yard interception return pick six against New England. Uh, so they, they have four touchdowns. They have 15 touchdowns this season, and more than 25% of them are defensive or special teams touchdowns. You're probably looking at Baltimore, and quite frankly, even Baltimore's wide receivers are a hot mess right now. You probably got one more game on the schedule where you're looking at Jalen Ramsey saying, man, he's going to make a tangible difference in this football game from a matchups perspective. It's week 18 against the Bills. So adding Ramsey into the, the unit's performance without Ramsey against those other kinds of offenses is going to accelerate what this defense is going to be. And you can have the strength of schedule conversation if you want. I really don't care right now. The Dolphins are 5-1. They've got a great chance to go to Philadelphia and have a statement win. We'll see if they do it. But if they are, I think they're going to have to do things a little differently defensively from a personnel standpoint than what they've done in the first two games that they played in against offenses that make you say, man, I wish we had Jalen Ramsey. And before pretty long, we're not going to have to say, man, I wish we had Jalen Ramsey because he is officially back into his practice window. He'll be on the active roster within the next three weeks. Excited for what that looks like. We have crossover Thursday with the Philadelphia Eagles uh, and locked on Eagles coming up. Uh, a little later tonight, going into Thursday. And we'll talk about a game plan to beat the Eagles when we're done the film study. So looking forward to bringing all of that to you. You can find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Make it a great rest of your day. I am out of here. Peace.